Don Larson here again. We are ready to get started with our technical illustration workshop. Again, welcome to everyone. Uh, before we get started, I'm going to just uh, tick through the um, housekeeping rules we use for this webinar. Uh, uh, if you experience any problems during the webinar, use the uh, uh, chat function in the control panel there. All attendees will be muted for the duration of the webinar. Computer audio is recommended, but you can also call in. Uh, there are some associated materials that we posted, some little PDFs that you can drag and drop uh, to your uh, to your desktop. You're welcome. We invite you to do that. And um, then uh, during the webinar, you can post your questions at any time using the questions uh, uh, in the panel. Uh, but the questions uh, will be answered at the following um, uh, of the main presentation, or if we don't get to them all by email, but we'll make sure we follow up on any questions. So we love questions. The agenda for the webinar is uh, first, um, I'll just do a quick company overview, uh, an introduction, then there will be uh, uh, the main part of the presentation, which is a slide presentation accompanied by some live demos. Uh, then we'll wrap up with a summary and do the Q&A and a, a closing. And for those of you not familiar with Larson Software Technology, we're based in Houston, Texas. We were founded in 1984 and we're known, uh, we are graphics technology experts for over 30 years. We develop uh, powerful, innovative graphic software and toolkits based on open standards like CGM and SVG. Uh, we have promoted the use of uh, CGM uses over the years by making a free CGM viewer available, which is now, we've now gone to a subscription for that that you can uh, buy a inexpensive um, CGM viewer uh, on our store. Uh, we're the, also known as the developer of the first HTML5 CGM viewer that eliminates the needs for plugins to view CGMs in browsers. We're a member of the CGM Open Foundation, and uh, our products, um, Larson products, simplify the graphics workflow for technical publication professionals, engineers, and geologists, and uh, anyone working with technical graphics. So with that said, let me turn uh, it over to David Manick now for the, the main part of our presentation. And uh, but I will be standing by and we'll be joining for the uh, at the end for the questions. So, so Dave. Yeah, thank you, Don. Uh, good morning, uh, good afternoon and good evening, depending on where you are. Uh, please, you could join us for the first webinar of 2020. And we really wanted to feature Visex Edit because it is really becoming one of our best selling products, really. Uh, and that's happened over the last two to three years. Uh, we've really put a lot of effort um, and Don and the team have into improving the functionality and the performance of, of the software. Uh, and we're really focused on technical illustration, uh, the creation and the delivery of illustrations. Um, so what's the current status as we see of, as of, of illustration, the kind of function of technical illustration? And uh, there's no doubt there's a, there's a vast amount of 2D illustration uh, legacy data out there that needs to be uh, maintained, revised, edited, enhanced, all these different things. So we think it's important that we produce a tool that enables you to do that in the most effective way possible. So we're really focused on the requirements of this sector. So we've been um, listening to what the customers have said, you're already using the product, and we've tried to kind of uh, in put those into practice by developing functionality that helps them uh, really produce illustrations uh, quicker, but also enhance them and revise them quicker as well. And that's both for the illustrator and the writer, because the a lot of writers are kind of multitasking now as well, so they have to do illustration work as well. So I've not mentioned 3D, but 3D is a factor, and we'll discuss that later in the webinar, uh, and it, it is a key part of our strategy going forward. So 
So the objectives today is to uh, describe and demonstrate our current functionality and some of the new things that we've been working on as well. So the, the, the version you'll see today in the demo is a, a beta version. So um, so we might have a few issues, but I think generally it'd be, it'd be good. Um, so VizX said it, we're really focusing now on productivity, giving you the best tools we can, uh, both for illustration and then adding call outs, uh, maintaining hotspots, adding hotspots uh, through auto hotspotting, editing raster images, adding li a library function, which really does help if you're reusing information, uh, text finding. So text is kind of sometimes ignored in illustration products, but we're really um, focused on the text side. And with that end, we've we've introduced a new capability, uh, optical character recognition for text on raster images, which we'll, we'll preview later on. So we, we're gonna demonstrate some of the benefits of VizX Edit. Um, and we think it can complement what you might already have or in some cases replace it. So these are my kind of scenarios. So you might agree, disagree with these, but I think there's kind of three components to the illustration uh, discipline, which is obviously creation, revision, enhancement, and uh, publishing. In the creation, I think that's mainly moved over to uh, repurposing 3D data from CAD systems. Um, that's the way that kind of the industry has gone. So you really need good conversion tools and illustration tools to kind of uh, create your illustrations from scratch nowadays. But equally, revision is probably percentage wise is probably the highest percentage of the tasks that you might do. So you need good editing tools as, as before uh, in the creation part, but you also need to be able to uh, add, uh, edit the graphics and the text. Um, we also see a move towards hotspotting, so giving illustrations interactivity, kind of more life when they're actually distributed to the customers. So we call that enhancement uh, of the existing illustration. And then publishing, uh, how are we going to get this into our uh, IE term or our PDF file? So what kind of formats do we support? So CGM, SVG, PDF, TIFF. Uh, we kind of see a move away perhaps from uh, image images, uh, raster data, and we see CGM, SVG, PDF as the primary formats now that are important, uh, mainly because they can both contain uh, raster images as well as vector. So our focus is really moving towards making the, the, the software more productive and the uh, dis discipline of technical illustration. We've really seen that evolve over the years as, as more and more illustrations have been created, there's a greater need for them to be enhanced and revised. But we still see the illustration tools being significant and, and important. So we're not, we're not kind of taking that emphasis away, uh, but we do see a need for more productive tools. So tools that automate tasks like call outs, ability to easily and automatically add hotspots, the reuse of data like a library, capable of um, editing the old, very old images, image data where the, the illustration might have been scanned at some point or exported to a raster format. Good text handling, and we, we see this as becoming more prominent as well, and that's why we've, we've looked at OCR um, as a kind of component part of the software and also the export into the file formats that I've just mentioned. So CGM, SVG, and JPEG. Uh, and we'll talk about a bit like SVG later on, but that's become uh, a really prominent format over the past year or last year. Um, so our main functionality is around illustration and tools to achieve that. A call out tool, a library, automatic manual and hot, uh, hotspotting raster editing, superior text handling, that includes OCR, and comprehensive data exchange capabilities. So pretty much all the things, it encapsulates all the things I've just said. So the next uh, slides are really intended as a, as a takeaway, as much as me to go through each thing, because I really wanna 
show you a demo of most of these things. So, so we've really give you something documentary that you can take away and show other people. So the difference is this time we have a little video as well, which we will embed as well. So if, if you do, if you want to show somebody after the demo, some bits of functionality, we've embedded demos uh, into these as well. So little videos. So the isometric grid, um, I think most of the illustrations, certainly spare parts type illustrations are, are done isometrically now. So that's an important function that we support. Uh, and you can see that we have we can draw on the on the grid and the uh, the line tool, ellipse tool, rectangle all conform to the grid, in this case isometric. Got gun controls over the pen attributes. And something that we added very recently is if you're still working with thick and thin, like the technique illustrators use to give some kind of depth to the illustration, we can now easily double click between, between thick and thin lines, which saves some time. Again, productivity. Uh, the call outs, um, we haven't really done a lot to enhance this, but we are looking at some new things uh, probably in the next version. But we already have sequential numbering. We can control the shape of the call out, the connecting line, the line ending. We can also put a halo around just to throw it away from the illustration so it gives that, um, so it doesn't get confused with the illustration part. Hotspots. Um, we have done some work around this area uh, to try and improve the hotspotting, especially the auto hotspotting. Uh, we've got our kind of unique tree view, which gives you a, a nice kind of readout of what the hot, where the hotspots uh, are located, but also we can modify them very easily. And the auto spot, hotspotting function, we've done some work on that, which I'll, uh, I'll give you a brief preview of that in the demo. The library is is fairly new, but it, it's to me it's one of the most important kind of functions of the software. So we can reuse data. We often get asked is well, what are the in your libraries? But I think what's more important is you can easily create your own library. So you just by clicking on a part, you can add it to the library, create your own for specific projects or specific customers, and share those around your organization. Uh, we've done a few things for S1000D, like some of the symbols, and we're probably going to do some more in the future. Um, but I think the primary thing is you can create your own library. Raster editing. Uh, we ha we don't have a, a raster editor built into Visex Edit, but it's so easy just to double click and uh, open your own preferred one. So we've made it possible to use obviously things that are built into the operating system like Paint, but you could also use Photoshop or Corel Paint. So whatever software you're using or you're comfortable with, uh, you can do your edit and then save it and it will update the illustration in Visex Edit. We might actually create our own image editor if we think it's really needed um, and it becomes, uh, we can add more functionality that will actually uh, supersede perhaps something like Photoshop, but that's going to be a, a tough one. Uh, text handling. Um, so we're up, we've we've had a text search for some time, and it's also a find it uh, has a find and replace, and that's something we're going to work on uh, again for the next version, uh, and make it more a bit user friendly and uh, highlight the text better. So we're going to do some work on that, uh, but it's functional as it is, but we're going to do some more work on it. The main thing we've done here is uh, OCR. So we've had a, quite a few customer requests for this and ideas behind it. So uh, I'll demonstrate that for the first time today, but we can now um, say select some text and we can, t as, uh, as an image like pixels, and we can uh, recognize it and then turn it into real text. So I think that's gonna be extremely useful for, for customers working with old legacy data where all they have is the raster and now we can create text from it. We could do spell checks on it and that's another thing we're looking at as well, spell checker. Um, because we've we've added this into the uh, auto hotspot window, you can see this on the, on the right here, we're going to um, create 
now at VizX Edit Plus because it now kind of the auto hotspots in the OCR kind of fit together. And uh, so we kind of created a new name. Uh, so you're the first to hear it. And finally, uh, data exchange is obviously a key for many uh, of you um, getting your files into VizX Edit, getting them out. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, SVG has really become an important format for us over the past year, um, especially. So we've done a lot of work around that with customers, but also internally to uh, improve SVG, our support of it. And just the one slide here, just to explain what we've done, we've created a profile as we have, uh, we have for CGM to kind of tighten up the way we import and export SVG. Um, so we've, we called it Tech SVG, the profile. We've released, released a paper around that, uh, which Don wrote, and we've, we've socialized that with some of the standards committees. So hoping they might think it might be an idea to adopt it, and then we can have a proper kind of interchange of information and other vendors might support it. We, it this is not kind of proprietary, we've made it public. So the vendors could support it and we'll get a good kind of uh, exchange of information using the SVG format because it's a vast format. It, you can see the full, we only use kind of a fraction of it. So uh, it's important that it's uh, written in a certain way because it's very open, like hotspotting and things like that. You could write it in a multitude of ways. So that could really cause havoc if you've got a viewer and it doesn't work in it because it's been written in a different way. So. So we've been working hard on that over the past year. Uh, 2D CAD has become, uh, although we support 2D CAD and we'll, we'll talk a bit about supporting 3D in the future, uh, we've found that a lot of uh, our customers have gone over to PDF as a way of getting information out of CAD system, 2D uh, uh, data out of CAD systems and move away from DWG and DXF. So it kind of gives you less ways of working with a file but it gives you a really good quality and a consistent quality. So PDF is becoming uh, more important for graphics, we feel. And of course, specifications. Uh, we've got some of the audience on today who have to comply to these. So we've always supported them and will continue to do so. So let's go to demo. It is live. It's not recorded. So I'm just going to go to VizX Edit. So this is our, um, if you've not seen it before, this is our interface. Uh, we have our kind of main tool toolbar, and then we have subsidiary ones. You might recognize this one here from the auto hotspotting and the, the new OCR functionality. So these are all dockable. We can drag them around and dot them or just have them floating. This is our tree view, which is quite unique in an illustration product, which will show us all the hotspots as we create them, uh, kind of the metadata for the illustration. And on the right, we have a format window where we can control kind of common things like line, line weights, fills, text, and call outs. Um, so very easy to use. Uh, we also have tab view, so I've got a lot of the files that I'm going to use during this demonstration are uh, already open. So that I think this is extremely useful that I can just go between illustrations. If I'm working on something else, I can just pull it back up or copy and paste between them, which is extremely useful. I'm just going to go to open just to prove that we can open a file. And um, let's just choose CGM. And a new thing we've just introduced, uh, so anybody kind of updating in the future, we've now added a preview. Uh, we'll add this preview window to VizX Edit, so you can actually view, preview the CGMs. So that's quite a nice function, so you can actually see the illustration, although it's quite small. You can make it bigger using your uh, toolbar here. So extra large, you could go a bit bigger. But at least it gives you some kind of visual on the file before you open it. Okay, I mentioned the grid. Uh, this is obviously isometric. I'm just going to zoom in and um, we can use our drawing tools. 
So I've, as long as I've got grid alignment turned on, which is here, I've got the tool tip. So it tells me I can snap to the grid. I can get my line tool and drag out. And you can see that it will uh, hopefully you can see that it snaps to the grid and release and I get my line. So another thing you might have noticed there, which is fairly new, is we've got um, now a measurement on the line and it will tell you the angle. So if I drag down, it shows me 90 degrees and then it also shows me uh, it's a 30 mil length. So that's another thing we've, we've built into the software. Um, and if I right click, I've got an element info box. I can't make a change in here at the moment. It's something we're planning to do, but it does give me information on that that line. And as I mentioned, we uh, have the rectangle tool which will align to the grid. If I change my grid angle, then it will um, it will actually kind of reconfigure. So if I I can switch between the flat grid here, and it should actually change to a square. So um, you can actually go between the grids very easily. And uh, so we can see that on there. Also, most importantly, is an ellipse. So I can draw an ellipse. Again, it will snap to the angle that I'm at. So pretty common things you would expect from a, an illustration product um, is to snap to the grid that we've actually got set at that time. OK. So, so I'm not going to labor too much on the illustration tools. As I said, I want to kind of go, go on to some of the new things. One more thing before I finish is I've got a lasso now that's been added to the uh, toolbar. And the lasso tools allows me to uh, kind of just sweep around and select arbitrary uh, elements. So let's get to one of the, the first production tools. Um, and this is our call out tool. Uh, it's actually on the toolbar. And what we can do is we can set this in the under the edit menu, call out settings. So I can set all the properties of my call out. So my next one's going to be uh, obviously number one. Uh, it's going to add auto number them. We can set the increments. So it might not be one, two, three. We might want to set it increment to go every two or three. Um, we can set it to be a circle, depending on what your um, chosen method is. Sometimes there's no nothing surrounding the number. There could be a rectangle. So hopefully we've catered for whatever you want to do. We can also have a halo around it. So this will throw the leader line away from the illustration. And we've also got this ability to automatically generate a hotspot for this call out. You can turn that off, but in this case, we'll, we'll probably just go ahead and do that. So once I've set my properties, I then can just go around. I'm going to turn my grid alignment off. And I'm just going to drag and put my numbers on here. So you can see we're doing, um, it's just incrementing, incrementing up by one. And if I click this button here, you'll see the hotspots we've created and also you'll see them now appear in the tree view. <clears throat> so the tree view allows me to now right click and modify them. So if I wanted to add a screen tip in for this hotspot, then I could do. So this is something we'll, that would display in the viewing uh, side. I could also add a link. So this could be a URL. It could be a link to a, another document. It could be a link to a website, um, whatever I want to link to. So to give it that interactivity, another illustration perhaps. But the great thing is here, I've got a really easy way of annotating the illustration, something that normally would take me a while if I needed to set up, set up all these different styles. And certainly if I needed to hotspot them, that could take a while. So that's really the first I would say of our prod productivity tools. OK, this is an illustration uh, that's already been hotspotted. So you can see some of the hotspots down the right hand side. And this one's actually got that tool tip on it as well. But what I want to show at this point is the library. So under view, we have libraries and so just brings up this floating window. So this is a bit of our S1000D library. And then drag this over 
and there we've got the uh, the arrow that just uh, is from the uh, S1000D preferred symbols. So I can easily change this. I can change its size uh, just by dragging out. And then we have the symbol. So the key is here, we have, a, we have a library that already exists, but what if we want to create a new one? So if I add, I'm going to give this a really obvious name. Okay. And let's just select that library. Um, perhaps we'll select this item here, which is group, so that's convenient and add to the library. Give it a name, which is always a challenge thinking of names. So I'm going to say bearing and they can see it's added to our library. And then I can just drag and drop this out and we have our uh, item. So hopefully you can see that we can really create our own libraries, reuse others, share them with other people within the organization, create them for projects, uh, this is a really nice function. I like the way that it works and uh, we'll see if we can enhance, enhance it a bit more as we go along, but works pretty well as it is. Okay, so hotspots. So this is a, a TIFF image, a raster image, and I thought we can, we can hotspot, uh, automatically hotspot, we can uh, manually hotspot, but I thought this, this is a bit more meaningful because this, this is a an image, it's not a, uh, it's not real text. So we could auto hotspot real text, but that would be a lot easier in theory. Um, so again, I'm gonna go to my uh, edit menu and auto hotspot settings. I, it would take a whole webinar just to go through these, but I'm just gonna explain a few parts of it to you. So what you can do is you can set this up to recognize um, or how many characters we want the hotspot to have. So we have a lot of text on here that we want to really ignore. We weren't really the call outs of the numbers on here. Uh, so the maximum we have is, is two digits. So that looks good. Uh, it's also a uh, image. So we want to set the threshold, the confidence factor we have in this. Uh, how good is the scan? So we can set the confidence factor. I've set it quite low. So um, just to show you the uh, that this is, is a, it is a better scan, but we just want to give you an idea of how it works. Okay, so let's just move. I think those settings are good. So firstly, I just want to do a manual hotspot. So I'm going to zoom in on this area. So we can also manually hotspot as well. So you don't have to auto hotspot. So I can just say, I want to select this number here. We'll call it one. And all those details are on here already, so I can put in the URL and whatever and click OK. And then we've done a manual hotspot. So that would be a bit laborious, perhaps, if you had a lot to do. So what I'm going to do is just remove that. Let's just refresh and show you really the advantage of, uh, of auto hotspotting. We've set those parameters up. I'm just going to put this back to full size here. And the auto hotspot tool is here. Just start it. And you can see that it's added all the hotspots down here. So, and we can see them on the screen as well. And it's done a pretty good job. It's even pulled out because there was two digits on here on the measurement. Okay, so that's looking good. Uh, but one problem, and that was no pun intended there, but one problem is the number one. So let's just zoom in on that. And the, re the reason it's struggling with this is, is it, it doesn't really think it's, it doesn't really look like a one. It doesn't have a tail like a one. So it could be an L perhaps or an I. So uh, that's why it's um, struggling with that. Where it's got another number associated with it, I think it's a three in that case, then it's, it's okay. But so what do we do? It's, see, it's got this green box around it. This is a new function. So if I right click, oh, I should do right click. Uh, 
There we go. Sorry. Um, what it's doing is it, it's not sure about it. So it's put the green box around it. We can um, add this to kind of a history that it will recognize it in the future. But it did see it was a one. So it's added into this box. If it wasn't that, I could change it in here. But I also, I can accept it. And if I accept it, it's now hot spotted it. So this is really useful if you've got some scans that aren't particularly good that you want to go around. Um, you can see it added it down here that you can use this functionality just to make sure that it's correct. So kind of a QA. And then we've got um, a really good way of making sure that the, uh, the number in is correct. Okay. So let's just make that to the size. So as I said, we can hotspot both raster and vector data. So this is, um, so we'll come to the, the OCR has a bit of a kind of a, a connection to that, but we'll come to that in a second. So I just want to go to the uh, raster editing. Because again, this is quite important for people with a lot of legacy data that need to kind of edit their illustrations. Now, there's a common theme here that we're using this illustration again and again. So we saved it as a TIFF, um, but really because there's no restrictions around it. So that's good. So I'm going to edit here with uh, paint, just really simple stuff. Um, you could connect it to whatever you want. So you could, you could browse for your preferred application might be Photoshop and then change the the dot uh, exe but I'm just going to use paint so it comes up pretty quickly and here's a scan and I've got my eraser so I can just remove the number three but also obviously use the uh, selection tool here to save that let's go back to our illustration Oops, it's just got the windows just disappeared. Where are we? There we go. And there you can see the number three has gone. Okay, so it edits in place, so you shouldn't have any kind of mismatches. You could still add vectors to this as well. So you could add to it, you could bring things in from the library that are vectors. So Really, you can create that hybrid file and save it as a CGM or as an SVG and then take it into your uh, viewing environment or your publishing environment, whatever that might be. So um, this was one an, an important part of adding this because th there are still quite a lot of legacy raster images out there. So let's go to that text find function. This is one of the, as I said, this is beta. So this is one of the things had a couple of issues with. Um, so let's just say, oh, I've already put bolt in there. Let's just try retyping that because I had a bit of a thing with it. So let's select. So you can see it selected it here. One of the things we'll probably do in the future is highlight that, but also keep that box active. Um, I can find the next instance of it, which was here. So you could see it'd be beneficial if I highlighted this, uh, then you could see it better with Bolt. So this is a find and replace. So in uh, that would be particularly useful if I had to um, find and replace uh, certain words or whatever that are on my illustration. So obviously very similar to Word, your word processing software. The other thing is we're thinking of doing is adding in a spell checker in the future as well, which might be useful. Not particularly, hopefully it's already been spell checked before this, if it's an old, old illustration, but if we add in new things in, that might be useful. Okay, and our, and our final one is the OCR. So I'm just gonna go and zoom in on um, this area here. So hopefully you can see this. It might not be uh, the quality. It's not that good because this is pixelated. So this is an image. So I'd have to get my uh, paint back up and remove this and then add the text and, and so forth. So our new function is we can uh, rec recognize all the text at one go on the illustration. Um, 
which are probably is not a great idea um, because some of it might be not to the quality that we want. So I think the best option at the moment is I can just drag over the area that I want to recognize and click and it's highlighted it and it just giving me a warning message that I'm going if I accept it it looks like it's done a good job then the scan part is going to go away the image so I'll say I'll say yeah well uh, and here's our text so I think this is really really useful for for people with again with images of illustrations that they want proper text that they can then change uh, they might want to change the font they might want to change their wording uh, various things so and th this could also work with numbers as well so if we wanted to change the text of a call out to a number uh, then we could do that then it's it's proper text it, it i think is a tremendous advantage in doing this and the idea came that we're we kind of partly we were partly doing it already if you know remember back to the hotspot is that we kind of recognize that it was a one already or number two or 13 but what we weren't doing is converting it into text so now we can do that so i think this is going to be a really useful function for our users okay so the last part i just want to talk about um data exchange and um, i mentioned svg uh, but we support the other formats as well so this is the key at the end when you've completed your illustration you need to get these out into a format so obviously cgm you know we are the experts cgm we've been doing it for years so we support all the profiles you know s1000d ata so all compliant cgms um pdf and the image formats tiff png jpeg and um, of course svg so I could easily export this as a, an SVG file, put it onto the desktop. Oops, so I'll, uh, I've already done one, so let me just, uh, don't need to do it again. And I've exported it, so let's go to our desktop. Hopefully my desktop is not too bad. Here we go. So here's my SVG. And the nice thing is here, you can see the tooltip. So all the hotspots have gone out into the SVG. We write them in a standard way. So ideal if you want to uh, not use CGM, use SVG instead. All those things are nicely preserved hotspotting. So if we had a link, we could link out to whatever it is. So that was another kind of question that we had from users about the support of SVG. And that's one of the things we've been working hard on. OK, so let's get back to our slides. So as I mentioned, we've now got Visex Edit Plus, which is the uh, auto hotspotting and now the OCR. So if you already got the uh, auto hotspot version, you'll get that as part of the uh, new release automatically if you're under maintenance. Uh, but we've been talking about 2D for the last 30 minutes or so, but what about 3D? Well, our first step with Visex Edit is we're gonna do a 3D to 2D conversion a hidden line removal um, and we're probably going to support or will support generic CAD formats like STEP, IGES, uh, 3D formats and we're working on that currently so hopefully we get some announcements uh, this year on that. Uh, publishing 3D um, we're very kind of enthusiastic about X3D as um, mainly because it's based on XML so we've got kind of SVG, which is XML. We've got this X3D, which is XML. So this is the way we feel we might go from a 3D output point of view. Again, we want to kind of drive that standards-based way of, um, of creating data. And we think this is probably the best way to go is X3D. So how does it fit? Hopefully you've you kind of figured it out during the last 30 minutes, but really the things I spoke about in detail um, should really easily integrate into your existing processes. I think it's a really good tool for illustrators and writers because it's extremely easy to use. Um, 
we've got all those kind of good data exchange, uh, which are important in the industry, good vector and raster editing, um, the call out tool, hotspot tool, that compliance that we need, and this new function for optical character recognition, which I think is going to be extremely useful for a lot of our customers. So in summary, I think we've kind of fulfilled all those different scenarios. Um, you know, there's lots of formats out there and we are, we're on the end of a, a telephone line. Uh, we do very kind of personalized support. We can really react really quickly for customers to help them with any issues that they have. Um, and I'm really proud of that uh, thing that we can really uh, focus on what the customer needs. Uh, you know, we're not kind of, an 0800 number, we are really focused on this industry and what it needs. So we were always known as a CGM editor, but I think now our support of SVG and other formats as well as has really broadened our appeal. Um, and we really want to work with illustrators and writers to give them the best tool that they we can. And that focus on productivity, I think you can see that in some of the functions that we're introducing that we really want to make illustrators and writers and the whole kind of process more productive. So questions, uh, let's just uh, see if we have any. Somebody said not audible. So I hope I've not been speaking for the last uh, 30 minutes and you can't hear me, but my microphone is on. So I apologize if I, wasn't coming over very well. Very well. Um, so we have a question that um, came up the other day as well, and that was uh, around hotspotting. And can we export our hotspots out of the uh, of the program, actually as a text file or as an XML file? So um, and Don, I can just hear Don joining me again. Let's just go back to VizX Edit. This is quite an important question because of the fact that uh, we can do that because we can export as um, an XCF, which is an XML companion file. So uh, a lot of, uh, or previously a lot of systems used a, rather than the, the hotspot information being embedded inside the file, it was actually, um, actually wanted to hold it secondary to the file like as, a, as, a, as another file, as an XML file. So we have that ability to create um, uh, an XML file with all the coordinates, hotspot coordinates, and all the information, all the metadata about that file. So that's really useful. Um, so you, you get an XML file from the soft from our software, which includes it all that all that information. So that's really uh, an important uh, function that I probably didn't mention. I apologize for that. Have you any comments on that, Dan? Uh, no, that's uh, yeah. That well, other than that's um, it's an X, XML file encoded according to the S one thousand D spec. Yeah, there you go. So but it's uh, yeah. So it's also it's not only uh, a file that it's actually to the spec. You can find it in the spec, aren't you? The uh, companion file, and we com right. conform to that. So that's a good point. Thank you. Um, question about leader lines uh, for call outs, the size of the halo. Yeah, you can control that. Um, so let me just go to the edit call out settings. And you can see down here that I can control the size of the halo here. I, c I can turn it off or on, but I can change the line width and it's multiple. It's a multiple of the, uh, the, the leader line. So you can make it three times as big or four times. Uh, so yeah, you can control the size of that halo. Um, another question here about automating CGM for ATA2, for example, to web CGM. Not quite sure what automate. I think um, Don, do we can we set web CA, web CGM as a default? Uh, yes, you can. You can. Um, yeah, you can. Um, I, I assume what the, um, 
Let me just get to say about this. The attendee is talking about is, is like opening a ATA 2.4 and saving as web CGM. And yeah, that should be doable. Uh, you just uh, open it and then adjust and, and then have your export setting to, uh, you know, you can do it on when you're exporting or you can set the default. So yeah, that's, if I understand the question right, that's still one. Yeah, let me just go to save as. And um, yeah, so if you've got um, a CGM, if I saved it now, it would save it as a web CGM. So, um, so yeah, you, you could change them uh, quite easy just by resaving them and it'll have that profile. Correct, Don? Yes, correct. Okay. Hope that answers your question. If not, then please, uh, you could send us an email and we'll, we'll try and deconstruct it a bit more. Do you have a zero line weight for construction? <laughs> Yeah, that's a good question. Don, do you want to answer that? This is this um, no pen. So if you're an Isodraw user, something you'll be familiar with. Sorry, Don. Um, I think the answer is no. Yeah, not really. Um, I mean, you can set the line width to zero, but um, that's kind of a kind of a ambiguous thing because it's... Uh, Setting the line weight to zero then depends on a, a viewer behavior recognizing that and uh, making it invisible. So uh, um, yeah, we we've had so the the background. Sorry, Don. The background behind the question is that Isodraw has this no pen weight, and um, we have had some issues with our customers uh, with different viewing technologies not recognizing that there should be no pen there. Uh, and actually displaying something. But I, I can see the, also the use of it as well as a construction line. So I think we'll explore that, um, see if we can do something, but something that doesn't fool the viewers into thinking, you know, why is that, why am I seeing this line, but I don't want to display it kind of thing. So um, so at the moment, the, I suppose the short answer is no, not at the moment, but it's something we'll, we'll investigate further to try and get a... Um, kind of a solution that, that works for the viewers. Uh, the thing is as well, when you export it out, uh, it's not something supported in the CGM profile, is it, Don? Web CGM, is it no pen? No, no. No, so that kind of makes it a bit proprietary as well. So perhaps it might be something that we could look at having in the software that you, you've got it as the original native file, but I don't know. We'll have to discuss that one. Okay, so when will a lab webinar be held for Visex Transforms and its capabilities? Um, thank you for asking. Um, now you've asked me, I think we will do, we usually do a conversion webinar uh, during the year that focuses on different conversion technologies and obviously Visex Transform will, will fall into that. So thank you for that request and uh, we'll take that on board and hopefully do one uh, later this year. So we're still planning on different webinars, what we're going to do, but that's a, a good suggestion. Thank you. Um, will you be adding PowerPoint file to the handouts uh, section for download? Yes, they'll be on um, our slide share. So you'll get a link in the email tomorrow that links you to that and you'll be able to download them. Conversion in batch. We don't do batch conversion in VizX Edit. Uh, we only do that through our conversion tools. So uh, like VizX Transform, uh, CGM to Vector. Uh, and the reason we kind of separate those out uh, is that we can do it properly. We've got code that does it very quickly. We've got code that does over and above what you could do in the um, VizX Edit. Um, I know the software kind of do it via a macro, which doesn't give you as uh, the speed, but also we can create log files and so forth within the specific converters. So I would suggest you look at our conversion uh, and test those, and you'll see that you know they, they're very, really, really quick. They can do thousands of files and they'll log things where they might go wrong. So I think that's the best advice there. Would you agree with that, Don? Yes, right. There's a lot of that for automating and in the uh, 
physx transform and then we have a command line tool too that you can run in command line that you can set up rules and stuff like that so yeah it is it is um batch conversion is uh and automation is a different kind of different animal so that's why i agree that's why we separated them out yeah and we also as don mentioned we have command lines so it's something that could run in the background so it doesn't interfere with normal kind of illustration practices so it's something that could be invisible to the user and it's just happening in the background um do we have ability to create non-isometric grids not at the moment but it's another thing that we're looking at for the future don's uh it's on our list uh our product roadmap so if that's it's actually on there so hopefully we will introduce that as we move forward we have a lot of questions is it possible to auto organize just look at the time hotspots in the tree so that if they are multiples of a specific item number they will fall in line with the tree interesting never thought of that one perhaps we'll take that offline Don. I think yeah I'll there was to... one thing we david there was one thing that um we did add in the in the more recent version is if there's if this for instance if the same call out occurs multiple times it'll it'll check for duplicates and add a suffix so that they uh they get sequenced and you don't get duplicates so there is something for that now it doesn't resort them reorder them but that's something that's a re request we've had and we're considering that okay that's good um can you uh project a plan view to an ellipse right okay and again this is a um, I know we've definitely got an ISO draw user here. <laughs> um, not at the moment. So again, we, we're looking at improving our handling of ellipses and so forth. So um, for Don's kind of uh, kind of ed education on here, that there's there's a way of actually within ISO draw projecting something, say dragging an ellipse and it'll go flat to a circle or taking a circle and projecting it over and it'll go to an ellipse depending on the grid that you've got set so but it's something again that's on our roadmap um so thank you uh for that question it, it, a lot of these things are really important to us uh but we have um so much bandwidth that we can add all these different things can you select text or a specific line weights um not sure about the select text one, but uh, specific line weights. Did we, uh, I think this is going back to that global line weight thing done, uh, or can we select all the illustration with a, with a specific line weight? Can we just select the, all the thick lines, for instance? Are you following that? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I, no, uh, <laughs> the short answer is no. <laughs> uh, I'm, I mean, they will be grouped by the, uh, whether they're thick or thin, but as far as selecting, like select all thick lines or something. I, no, we I, can't do that. If, he, if we're talking about a global change of a pen weight, then um, again, that's something you can yeah you can do global changes you, you now. can do a global change so if you want to make your, all your thick lines a different line weight then yes but actually physically select them so they're highlighted no it'd be good to get a use case on that if that's uh something you, that's specifically re re required so all these questions are logged and we'll go back and we'll take these on board and if you want to reach out to us individually via email, we will obviously try and answer those questions as well. Um, and just as I thought we were out of questions, we've got some more. So that's good. I've, it's a very long question. So let me just read it first. Okay, I think we'll take this one offline. Um, this is a... A, a user question i'm not avoiding it it's just really long and convoluted so um and we'll, we'll definitely 
we'll get back to you on that one. And that's the when editing items within the tree are there when there are a lot of hotspots. So um, I'm sure Don's reading that and we'll take that one offline. So I apologize. I'm not trying to avoid it, but I, I'm just conscious that we've been going an hour and um, I kind of want, just want to wrap up. So I apologized on that one. Okay. So appreciate those questions. That's excellent. I think that's the most questions we've ever had done. Is that what they say? That's right. Yeah, that's great. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. It's Thank really you. good feedback. Thank you. <laughs> I probably should have asked for questions. I think I, I didn't really, uh, I put the actually a slide up, but I didn't say send us your questions, but I think you figured it out. Thank you. So closing. Wow. Can we discover more information about Larson? Yes, you can via the website. Please visit and you can download data sheets. Uh, they're also in the handouts and the, the slides we've done, as I mentioned, will be uh, available. They're not there yet. So please wait until tomorrow when you get your email. Uh, and also there'll be a link to the recording. So if you want to go over it again, then please uh, do so. But also you can have uh, share it with your colleagues and so forth if they're interested. You can follow us on LinkedIn. Uh, Vizex Edit Plus available. We're looking in March. Um, it might be earlier, but March is what we're looking at at the moment. That's for the OCR part. Um, we're also looking at an event in, uh, we're thinking of going on the road with Vizex, uh, not just Vizex Edit, but other things. We're, we're choosing so lo locations. So if you're interested, if you want us to visit your area or you, your company personally, then we can, we'll take that on board and uh, we'll come out to see you in person rather than just online. So uh, please drop us a line. Um, hopefully kind of uh, Hawaii or no, joking, um, but somewhere. <laughs> probably uh we probably do we could do possibly europe but it have to be uh justified in certain areas but okay so thanks for joining us today it's been a really good session i think hope you enjoyed it uh we'll be publicizing some more webinars in the near future so i hope you can join those uh, around conversion and so forth but just thank you for today and we'll hopefully again see you soon thank you very much